from exports to e-commerce, from business to banking, from football to free markets, Germany seems to have found a winning formula. My name is Philip Alterman. I am deputy editor of Comment is Free, and I'm here at the TUC After Austerity Conference in London. With me here today, I have uh, two delegates from the conference to ask one of the most urgent and pressing questions right now. Should Britain become more like Germany? So on my left here, I have David Green, who's the chief executive of the think tank Civitas. And on my right, I have Sebastian Zick of the Hans Böckler Foundation. So what could Britain perhaps learn from Germany? Um, the question if Britain should be more like Germany is rather interesting since like 10 years ago, <coughs> it was maybe the question if Germany should more be like Britain, which was um, posed to German uh, economists or lawyers. Mm. But now in the crisis, financial crisis and economic crisis, uh, we have seen that just it is it was just this um, cooperative system in Germany, with the trade unions, with the corporations, with the banks, and um, the public, and all those economic f factors that work together, which manage together to um, well to to manage the crisis and not fall too deep into the crisis. I think there's a couple of things we, we could learn. First of all, about their uh, banking system, and secondly, about their uh, their corporations, their, their model of ownership, let's call it. So, if you take their their, their banking first of all, because they've, <coughs> they've got big banks like ours, they've got Commerzbank Bank and uh, Deutsche Bank and so on. They behave pretty much in the same way. Uh, they reduced, they they did foolish things in international markets with derivatives and they reduced uh, lending to businesses during the recession. Now, the savings banks, these small localised banks, uh, which are, on the face of it, look very unpromising, so they have a supervisory board and executive board. Two-thirds of the supervisory board is nominated by the local council, one-third by the employees. Uh, they look like they're politicised, but they're not. Uh, they can only lend within a certain geographical area, usually a local authority area. Uh, they increased loans to businesses during the recession from 2008 onwards. Uh, so they made up for the failure of the, the uh, big commercial banks. Now we haven't got institutions like that. And what, so what having institutions of that type does is it allows people in little, in little towns all over Germany to solve their own problems. Our big banks are much more likely to say, well, um, however good you are, we're not doing automotive parts at the moment, or whatever it might be. I mean, you might argue that uh, having all those uh, virtuous uh, regional banks only really works if you have people who actually save money rather than being you know, people who are used to easy credit uh, and, you know, uh, going on shopping sprees on the high street. Isn't it big, quite a big ask of the British public to change their whole mentality? Yeah, I'm not sure it requires uh, a change in the whole mentality. I think, uh, for example, at the moment, it would be very difficult, it would require the government action to create something like Sparkassen in this country. But we do have localised uh, credit unions and in January they were just given new powers. So previously they could only pay a dividend once a year, now they can pay interest on deposits and they are experienced in lending. Uh, they're only lending to individuals so far but they're now allowed to lend to businesses. They could combine their efforts with uh, community development finance institutions that are expert in lending to businesses. Uh, and that's already happening in a couple of places like Leeds and Bristol. Uh, credit unions, if credit unions were to offer um, three and a half or four percent, the money would come flooding in because people are looking for safe homes and a reasonable rate of return at the moment. And so uh, I don't think it would take that much actually to build up a pool of deposits. Uh, they're not allowed to create money, credit unions there, and they can only lend up to 90 percent of their deposits. So they have to have the deposits in order to do the lending. So. Um, I don't really think it would require a huge cultural transformation. It, it, it requires a little bit of institutional tweaking. I think it's always hard to just put one system on um, another, since, um, well, like you said, the culture is very different, I guess. I'm not so much into the um, banking system, I must say. Um, so, uh, but in the corporate governance system, it's not so easy to just change the system from stakeholder, employee um, involvement to to shareholder approach uh, or the other way around. And um, also Germany has its own problems. 
David, one of the uh, major roles that the banks in, in Britain have often played is that they've given people money to buy houses. Couldn't you say that um, in order to get around the problems uh, that Britain has, that maybe we need to become more German and, and switch to a more rent-based uh, relationship with housing? I don't think that's the um, solution to the banking problem. I think banks like to lend when there is collateral. So if things go wrong, they can always take the property. The vast majority of their balance sheets now are uh, commercial or, or uh, domestic property. Something like between five, six, something five, six, seven, eight percent is uh, loans to businesses. And uh, the solution to the lack of collateral uh, for SMEs, because if you go along as a small business uh, and uh, you want a loan, they're going to say, well, we want personal guarantees. You're going to have to sign over your house, probably your own house. Uh, and so. I think the solution to that is guarantees, and that's what the Germans have the, through, through the KFW and through the uh, savings banks. Instead of requiring collateral, they have guarantees. The, the Americans are the same, by the way. The, the American Small Business Administration has loaned um, billions and billions over the years, since the 50s, to uh, businesses in the form of guarantees to private loans to replace collateral. So I think that's the solution to the banking problem. We've, by the way, we've got our enterprise finance guarantee scheme which is to replace collateral with guarantees. Uh, but it's on a very small scale. And so we have an institution there, we could, we could increase that. That, I think, would uh, be far more beneficial in the immediate future to SMEs, credit-worthy SMEs, that are capable of uh, contributing to exports or to increasing uh, economic growth. Uh, Sebastian, finally, I mean, we've been uh, eulogising the, the German system uh, throughout this talk. Um, of course, there's another uh, role that Germany is now playing in the Eurozone crisis where it is increasingly seen uh, in a less positive light. Can you tell us a little bit about how um, sensitive Germans are feeling at the moment about uh, Germany's role in the global economy? On the one hand, Germans fear that they have to pay for, for the debts of the whole of Europe and there won't ever be a chance that um, Anybody would help Germany when there will be a crisis in this way. But on the other hand, um, I guess in general, Germans are very much in favor of the European Union still. Although there is criticism about the lack of democ de democracy in, in Europe's system. Um, but still, you, Germans are very much in favor of, of the European Union. And so there's a strong view that there should be um, um, help for the countries which are suffering at the moment. And so it's kind of a, a, two hearts in one soul, I guess. And it's hard to answer. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much.